After weeks of fighting, Ukrainian forces have broken through Russian defensive lines in the Zaporizhia region in the southeast to retake more territory. On Monday, Kyiv's defense ministry announced it had fully reclaimed the village of Robotyne. South of Robotyne lies the strategic city of Tokmak, a critical railroad junction for the Russian military. Ukraine has been pushing to reach the Sea of Azov in a grinding effort to cut Russian forces in half and severe the land bridge to Crimea. But Kyiv's advances have been slow as they push through Russia's heavily fortified positions and vast minefields. The fighting was ferocious and the price was paid in blood. This footage purportedly shows Ukrainian special forces fighting in the area around the village of Robotinye. We have one wounded. One of the soldiers stepped on a mine. While evacuating him, their vehicle is attacked by a kamikaze drone. The Ukrainian armed forces continue their offensive in the south. After the liberation of Robotnia, our armed forces are moving southeast of this settlement. Robotnia is free, but large parts of the small village lie in ruins. This video was released from one of the units that took the village. These civilians had been holding out during the fighting for weeks on end. Psychologically, it was very difficult when the water ran out, then the bread ran out, we planted a garden. Otherwise, we had to run for food in between the shelling. Now Ukrainian forces continue to push on. In front of them lies the next line of Russian defenses, trenches, tunnels and firing positions protected by vast minefields. Gaps in these minefields need to be blasted free bit by bit, a tedious, slow and deadly business. Marina Moran of the War Studies Department at King's College London joins me now. Marina, is this breakthrough in a small village truly significant or is Ukraine uh, trusting it will lead to something bigger still? Good afternoon. Well, it is an important milestone for the Ukrainian forces just from the perspective that they've been trying to get through Russian defenses since June, so since the counteroffensive had started. And so despite all the criticisms, they pushed on and, and tried to take the village. Of course, uh, we still don't have any reports confirming that they have taken the village. Uh, mopping up operations are still taking place. Um, I think it is important, um, first of all, for the morale of the troops. Um, however, the difficulties lie ahead, so we shouldn't be making any hopes at the stage yet. It is an important point because that opens the road to Tokmak, which is logistically important for the Russians and should the Ukrainians take the city. It would complicate Russia's logistics, especially in, in eastern Ukraine. Therefore, it remains to be seen um, how the strategy of the Ukrainian forces e evolves from now on. There are several more settlements and the Russian defenses are not of the same quality in all the settlements. However, they have prepared and they have been reinforcing as of the past two weeks, they have been reinforcing their defense line. So we have to wait and see how this mm. um, evolves. Well, you said difficulties lie ahead for the Ukrainians and there is a presumption that the counteroffensive, the Ukrainian counteroffensive that is, will have to end as the cold of winter arrives. Can you picture any major advances before then? Well, first of all, we have to talk about um, the fall season and the rain and the mud that will be created, which will make it difficult for the Ukrainian forces to use any um, heavy Western military equipment, such as the Challenger 2 tanks and um, Leopard 2s. So the Ukrainians will have limited capabilities in those terms, and we might not see any 
significant breakthroughs. However, now I'm talking more about Zaporizhia. Of course, we have other directions and we shouldn't discard them because around Bakhmut there were some advances um, by the Ukrainian forces in the south of Bakhmut. Um, there is kind of a trade of territory in, in the Kupiansk and Kharkiv region where it seems like the Russians are on the offensive there and are making progress there. So it's difficult to predict what the battlefield will look like. But winter will make it even more difficult because sustainment of troops requires food, heating and so on. So to get the troops through the winter to spring will be difficult for both parties involved here. Now, Ukraine's President Zelensky has said to Ukraine media that when Ukraine forces push through to the border of Russia occupied Crimea, he can envision pushing Russia to demilitarize Crimea, presumably through negotiations. What did you think when you read that? It is quite an ambitious statement, and uh, President Zelensky is a politician. He is not a, um, a somebody from the military. He is not General Zeluzhny, so I'm sure that the military has a completely different view of um, how this is going to play out. And Kirilla Budanov, the head of military intelligence, was also um, hinting that it might not be as easy as uh, President Zelensky is envisioning, namely demilitarizing Crimea. But that being said, um, what President Zelensky was trying to say is that he doesn't want uh, human losses, and that's understandable. However, I think given the situation, um, a lot has to happen until we can tell what the situation will look like if the Ukrainian forces manage to reach Crimea and at what stage Russia will be then, at what stage Ukraine will be then. So I, I think um, it's quite a huge hypothetical. Maria Miron there at the War Studies Department at King's College London. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Let's get straight across to our special correspondent, Aya Ibrahim, reporting from Kyiv. Aya, what does this victory mean for Ukraine's counteroffensive? Uh, right, Claire. I mean, uh, this is a tiny village, not very dissimilar from other small villages that Ukraine has managed to retake during this uh, counteroffensive. But the difference between uh, uh, this one and the ones that have been retaken before is that it is a little bit closer uh, to towns like Militopol that um, Ukraine hopes to reach. And that would, um, you know, um, then make a huge strategic gain in this counteroffensive. So while it is itself uh, not of huge strategic importance. It certainly brings Ukrainian forces closer uh, to that uh, to that strategic city, uh, more south, about 85 kilometers uh, away. Now, I want to put the, this particular gain also for our viewers into the larger context of the counteroffensive. There are fears that these gains in the south might be coming at the expense of the front lines in the northeast. I was just in Kupiansk in the northeast just a couple of days ago in the Kharkiv region, where authorities have actually um, you know, uh, uh, told uh, about 12,000 residents to evacuate from that city about 40 kilometers away from the Russian border because in the past few weeks, uh, Russia has been intensifying its attack on that area in the northeast. And with that order ev evacuation, we have reason to believe that the authorities are worried that uh, Russia might be advancing uh, north while Ukraine is making gains um, in the southeast. Looking back at the village, uh, Robotine, do we know anything about the humanitarian uh, situation in the liberated town? Well, this is all very new and very fresh, and so uh, media uh, and journalism, uh, journalists' access to uh, the village um, is still uh, quite limited. We have, however, seen videos released by the Ukrainian military, and particularly the units that have uh, liberated uh, Robotine, uh, and there you see uh, soldiers being welcomed by uh, residents who look like they are in desperate need of humanitarian aid. Uh, old people usually are the ones uh, left behind or have not been able to evacuate from these areas. They're making emotional phone calls to their relatives elsewhere in the country, letting them know that they are safe. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, in disbelief that uh, Ukrainian forces uh, have managed um, to, to reach them. I can tell you a little bit about what I've seen from other uh, liberated villages in that area. Uh, usually they're completely destroyed. It is a strategy of the Russian military as they're retreating to really destroy everything in their way and also to mine civilian infrastructure, to heavily mine civilian infrastructure to make sure that it is difficult for um, 
Ukrainian troops to, to really, you know, regain full control uh, in that area. And then they would, they normally continue shelling these areas that have been retaken by Ukrainian authorities. So it's usually a very, very difficult time even after liberation. Well, thank you so much, as always, for your reporting. That is our special correspondent, Ibrahim, in Kiev. Many thanks.